Busch Gardens Williamsburg in Williamsburg, Virginia is home to nine amazing coasters and so many other attractions. But some coasters there definitely stand out amongst the rest. So today, I'm going to be ranking all nine roller coasters at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Let's jump right into it. I'm the Coaster Kid, and these are all nine of Busch Gardens Williamsburg's roller coasters ranked. Ninth place, Grover's Alpine Express. So, coming in at our ninth spot is Grover's Alpine Express. This is Busch Garden Williamsburg's Kitty Coaster located in their Sesame Street section. There's not really much to say about this ride, I mean like, it's a kitty coaster. It's a ride for little kids, there's not much else to say about it. But I will say it's actually a little more intense than most kitty coasters in my opinion. But it's still a super tame ride, so almost every little kid is fine on it. It's in ninth place mainly because it's the smallest and most boring ride at the park, and also, it's a kiddie coaster. Eighth place, Loch Ness Monster. Now it's time to start moving on to the bigger coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Loch Ness Monster is currently Busch Gardens Williamsburg's oldest coaster. The ride was built by now defunct manufacturer Aerodynamics. Loch Ness Monster was also the first ever coaster in the world to feature a pair of interlocking loops. But why did I only put the coaster in the eighth spot? Well, the reason is pretty simple. It's rough and boring. For the entire layout, the ride basically just does two loops and then meanders for the rest of it. The only other cool part of the ride besides the pair of interlocking loops is the helix in the man-made cave. The feeling of rushing around in a circle in the dark is just super fun. The helix in the cave is probably my favorite part of Loch Ness Monster, but besides that, there isn't much else to this coaster, which is why it's only in the 8th spot. 7th place, Tempesta. Tempesto is a skyrocket- Wait, 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 wait. Can we talk about this ride's name for a second? Who at the Busch Gardens team thought that naming a ride Tempesto would be a good idea? Remember, for this ride to get named Tempesto, it would have had to go through so many different SeaWorld officials, and they would have all had to go like, yeah, we think naming a ride Tempesto is going to be an amazing idea. Good job, guys. I mean, it sounds like a freaking pasta sauce. I don't understand. At this point, Busch Gardens should just sell a pasta sauce named Tempesto. Like, that would be perfect. In fact, even Coaster Studios made a pretty funny video about a Tempesto pasta sauce a few years back. I'll link that video up in the corner, but if someone could please tell me why this ride is named Tempesto in the comments, that would be wonderful. Anyways, rant about terrible coaster naming over. Back to the actual ride and ranking. Tempesto is a Skyrocket 2 model, so it's nothing special. These things are all across the world, and they all do the exact same thing, so there's not much to rant and rave about for a Tempesto. A lot of people think these rides are really uncomfortable or that they hurt, but I really don't think that they're that bad. I know the seats are really small and uncomfortable for Tempesto, but they don't really bother me. No! God, please, no! No! Anyways, the restraints aren't the best, but they aren't the worst either. So I read this ride in 7th place at Busch Gardens Williamsburg just because there's nothing special about it, and the name sucks. Sixth place, Invader. Coming in at sixth place, we have Invader. Invader is one of Busch Gardens Williamsburg's newest additions to the park. It is a wooden coaster made by Great Coasters International, and in my opinion, highly underrated. It is one of the best first drops I've ever experienced on a wooden coaster, and this thing hauls. I mean, it moves so fast for a wooden coaster. The first time I rode it, I was completely blown away. This thing is a lot packed into such a little punch. Not to mention, it's definitely got some good airtime for a wooden coaster. A lot of people say this ride is rough, and yeah, it's not the smoothest, but it's definitely not as bad as things like Loch Ness Monster. So that's why Invader is at the sixth spot, because I think this thing is really, really fun and has some really, really great moments. But Busch Gardens Williamsburg's top five is even better. Fifth place, Alpengeist. Alpengeist is the world's tallest inverted coaster. Standing at 195 feet tall with a 170 foot drop and 6 inversions, this is one of the craziest coasters I've ever ridden. Now, Alpengeist is not for the faint of heart. It is probably the most intense coaster I've ever ridden. 
Well, well, that is if you are excluding Skyrush, which I am, because I consider Skyrush as its, like, own breed of coaster. Oh, okay, okay, enough, enough, enough. Weird, weird Skyrush thing over. Back, back to Alpen, guys. Back to Alpen, guys. Back to Alpen, guys. <laughs> this ride pulls some really, really strong positive Gs, but it is still a really, really good ride. I really enjoy the first drop in the Zero G roll right after you dive under the bridge. I would definitely not recommend this ride if you don't take too well to intensity, but if you're up for it, I definitely recommend it. There's also a lot of headbanging on Alpengeist between the over shoulder restraints, so if you take a ride on it, I definitely recommend that you try to keep your head against the seat to avoid headbanging. But even with all its intensity, it's a really great ride. The reason it's not higher on this list is just because the ride can be a little too intense sometimes and the headbanging doesn't make for a great experience. Fourth place for Bolton. Verbolton is a multi-launch family roller coaster located all the way in the back of the park. This ride is themed to a travel agency where you take a trip through the black forest in a car. Verbolton actually means forbidden in German, so it's like you're forbidden to go into the forest. The ride launches you into complete darkness and then does some fun twists and turns before stopping. Now this is where I really love Verbolton. Before I continue though, spoiler alert if you have not ridden Verbolton. This part of Verbolton is something that if you want to experience for the first time when you ride it, I recommend skipping this portion of the video because I don't want to spoil the ride for you. So I'm putting a timestamp on screen, skip to that part of the video to avoid this spoiler. Verbolton is one of the only coasters in the world to feature a drop track. A drop track is a unique element on a coaster in which the train stops and locks in place with the track under it. Then, that piece of track, with the train on top, drops down similar to a drop tower. Very few coasters in the world do this, and I've only experienced the element on one other coaster at Universal Studios Orlando. This ride is Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. For riders who don't know about this element, it usually scares the living crap out of them, but it's really not that bad and super fun on the ride. Verbolton is also probably Busch Gardens Williamsburg's most themed coaster. They really do a great job with it, and there's really no fault with this amazing family multi-launch coaster. The reason I don't place it higher is because the next three coasters are absolutely phenomenal rides. Third place, Apollo's Chariot. Apollo's Chariot was the first ever B&M hyper coaster to be built. B&M is one of the most prestigious roller coaster manufacturing companies in the world, and one of their most successful models is the hyper coaster. A hypercoaster is a coaster with a drop anywhere between 200 and 300 feet. Apollo's Chariot features a drop of 210 feet, making it Busch Gardens Williamsburg's tallest coaster. The ride is built for floater airtime, which basically means you come and flow out of your seat. It doesn't really have the strongest airtime in the world, but it's still pretty good and makes for a really fun ride. Anyone can ride this coaster because it's not intense at all. I know it may look super scary because of the height, but it's actually a really gentle giant. Anyone who goes on it will come off wanting another ride. The reason I put Apollo's Chariot in third place is because the airtime on this ride is just not as strong as some of the newer B&M hyper coasters. So like Candemonium at Hershey Park, I think it is a better hyper coaster just because the airtime is better. But Apollo's Chariot is also the first ever hyper coaster, so it makes sense why it's not as good as the newer ones. The other reason I put it in third place is just because the next two rides at the park offered more than just airtime. Second place, Griffin. Griffin is Busch Gardens Williamsburg's second tallest coaster, standing at 205 feet tall. This ride is again made by B&M and is a dive coaster. A dive coaster is just another model of coaster made by B&M, and you can find them all over the world at multiple different parks. After you ascend the lift hill, you will come to the drop, and the ride will hold you there, where you will look down over the edge. Now, you're looking down literally 205 feet straight to the ground for about 5-ish seconds before the ride releases you and you plummet to the ground. Now, there are dive coasters all over the world, like I said earlier, so hanging over the edge is nothing special, but it is still always a cool experience, especially for people who are not enthusiasts. You get some really great airtime during that first drop, and after, the ride is just super, super fun. But for me personally, the ride is just a little bit tame. I would personally prefer the ride to be a little more intense, especially for its sheer size, which is why I only put it in the number two spot. But our number one spot has it all. Well, that is except for the theming. First place, Pantheon. 
our number one spot is held by Busch Gardens Williamsburg's newest roller coaster. Pantheon, which opened in 2022, is in my personal opinion the best ride at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This ride launches you forward, then backward, then forward again. You go through some crazy airtime hills and inversions which will launch you out of your seat and then push you right back into it. Some of the inversions give some crazy hang time, and the ride is just an overall crazy and insane experience. I was actually at Pantheon for its opening weekend, and it was a great experience. My first ever ride was in the back row, and I absolutely loved every second of it. This ride has got the intensity, the airtime, the hang time, the fun factor, the positive Gs, but it's just missing one thing. Theming. Bush Gardens Williamsburg probably spent around $15 million for this coaster easily, and they barely themed it. I will say the entrance sign looks super cool, but besides that, there's really nothing. There are a few plaques with information about Greek gods, but come on. If you're going to spend millions on one coaster, you have to spend a little bit on the theming, even if it's like $10. Okay, I, I know it would have costed more than $10, but like, spend something on it. Come on, theming enhances a ride so much. Look at Verbolton, for example. If Verbolton didn't have all of its theming, it wouldn't be as cool as it is. But because it has all that theming, it's awesome. But still, Pantheon is an absolutely amazing ride. The theming's just a letdown. Besides the lack of theming, the ride checks every box, which is why it is the number one coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Well, that's all of Busch Gardens Williamsburg's roller coasters ranked. Hopefully this helped if you're going to the park for the first time. Or, if you have already been on all these coasters, tell me what you think about my ranking. Feel free to comment all your thoughts down below. I would love to hear what you guys think about Busch Gardens Williamsburg's roller coasters. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, whatever. The more this channel grows, the more it encourages me to make more amazing content for you guys. And let me know what you guys want to see next. Maybe another ranking video or a review of coasters. Just let me know what type of content you guys want to see more of. Thanks for watching. I'm the Coaster Kid, and I will see you guys in the next video.